she was walking and and we were dancing the whole thing. Yes. The whole thing. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. We are live. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. We have any technical glitches? These these things that happen. And thank you for joining us for the tenth day of twelve days of Caribbean cooking. Today, of course, is everybody has been great so far, but I would like to think that today is going to be one of the best days. Well, not because I have the best chefs, but because I do, and I can say that because I'm the host and nobody can stop me. So I'm Naima, I'm your host today, and I'm coming to you live from St. Kitts. I'm at Jam Rock Restaurant with Chef Michael Clark. And as you can see, we've got our chefs over there at Petit Pont. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Michael Watson and Julius Jackson, and today we have a, tonight we have a very exciting show for you. We're going to be preparing some delicious dishes from the USBI. We're going to be enjoying some Kalaloo, and here in Saint Kitts and Nevis, I know even you're going to complain about it. We're making ackee and saltfish. I know we don't eat too much ackee here, but Michael's going to show you why it's not going to poison you. You know he's a Jamaican chef. So, we're going to begin first by introducing our chefs. Hello, Chef, Ju I call you Chef Julius or Chef Jackson? Either one's good. I'm good with both. Julius, much nicer. I'm called Chef Julius and Chef Michael. Thank you for joining us. Tell us today a little bit more about yourselves. We can start with you, Chef Michael. I believe we're in your restaurant, correct? That is correct. We're in the restaurant and that has been in existence and the founding for 50 years. Yes, I heard it's the longest running. The longest running restaurant in USVI, I heard. We're trying. We're trying. Yes, it is. But first of all, I'd like to thank the Department of Tourism and of course Julius Jackson for sharing his time with us. As you know, he's our culinary ambassador for the Department of Tourism here in the Virgin Islands. So he accompanied me today at Fair Kalaloo. But a little history of the pump room, real quick, is been in business for we're celebrating our 50th year, 50th year to this year. Well, let's take a moment for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take Who a gets five. 50 years in a restaurant? Some people don't get five months in a restaurant. How do you manage 50 years in a restaurant? You couldn't have been doing it for 50 years. That is correct. It was started by my mother and father uh, in 1970. Wow. Bought from a friend of Palm Passage, and, and in 1982, 19, December 16, 1982, I, I took over the management of the day-to-day -day operation with my sister, Barbara, Barbara. and, uh, and uh, in the late 90s, my, my, wife, joined my joined wife joined me here, I kind of forced her, forced her <laughs> because I needed the help, and, and she was such Naima, a, such there's a an person. echo. They probably need to and, turn off one of their systems. They probably have two systems on because we're getting an echo. Can they turn one off? Like mute, mute one. Sounds uh, like they um, have two systems going. Maybe a in USBI. Yes, uh -huh. it's coming through with an echo. So sorry to cut in, but it's it's difficult for the uh, viewers yeah, to hear. I think hear. we might have two um, systems playing in USBI. We have a little bit of an echo coming in. Right. So they can mute. If they can mute one, that would be great. They've got a great team over there. Oh, they do. They look fantastic. Uh, they do. Are we good now? Good. Testing. Good. 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 Wonderful. Is that clear? These are the things that happen when you're live, okay? This is what yeah. happens. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You were telling me your parents. Right. And then from 82, from 82 until, until the late 90s, my, late 90s, my sister and I are at that At that my time, my wife came into the business with me, my wife, Judith. Nicholson Watson and, uh, and uh, they say wives can't work together, but we certainly have created a great team together. And uh, we try to leave the problems of the business when we leave here. We go elsewhere to unwind a bit and have a great time as well. There are many great places in St. Thomas. Uh, we just happen to be, I think, the best. But, but uh, no, there are a lot of great places in St. Thomas. We are located, the Petit Pump Room is located right on the waterfront, right on, right on the waterfront. Right on the water. I'm gonna have to make uh, it there post COVID. Excuse me. Post, post COVID, we're gonna have to make it there. Uh, oh, absolutely. We'd love to have. You. That's that's what we love to do. We love to make everybody happy, smile, and enjoy what and enjoy what they eat, and want to come back. Want to come back to St. Thomas. 
Wonderful, wonderful. So next to you, you have Chef Julius Jackson. Hi, Chef Julius. Who Hi, is a hello. chef? Hi. But you, I know you used to be a boxer, but I'm going to get into that. So under, explain to me, Chef Julius, I know you love food. We talked a little bit about food. How did you get into food from boxing? Um, well, uh, I've, I've well, done I've, both, I've my, done whole both my whole life. Uh, oh, your uh, whole uh, life. Coming up as a kid, I loved I love eating. I loved to eat. I like, so I was like, you know what? Let me learn to cook. Uh, <laughs> and then I fell in love with, uh, with, uh, with the art of it, you know, the cuisine. I fell in love, love with learning and, and expanding. And also, I love, and also to, watch I love to watch people enjoy food. Enjoy food. Um, food is a necessity, but also, but also it, can it can be something enjoyable. So I love that, uh, that those two dynamics. Um, I love watching people eat and enjoy my food. Uh, so that's that's part of why I love food. Uh, but I've done both my whole life. Um, I'm also a 2008 Olympian. I went to Olympics in 2008 yeah. boxing. Uh, same that is the same I year I graduated culinary school. So, I've, I've, done so both I've, I've done both the whole time. So I, and I so I, I love them both, and that's what I do. I do both. Boxing, boxing chef, they call me, you know? <laughs> I can understand, because when I'm hungry, I want to fight people. So, <laughs> yeah, the two come together. It's true. I want to ask you some more about yourselves and your restaurant. Naima, Naima, the echo is still over there. With, um, okay, we're going to deal with it. But I think that we, I want you to get started cooking so that we can continue our cooking and we can chat while our food is preparing. How about that? Sounds good. Sounds good. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Okay, so what are we going to be starting with today? Today we're going to be starting with the basic ingredients of calabas, which is a, a basically a spinach, a green dish. And it's a combination of a bunch of things. And the best way to describe Callaloo is by Arona Peterson, who was a native that grew up in St. Thomas all her life. And she wrote one of the first culinary books and uh, described, it as, described it as, I have the, I have the, the hand bone here, which you will see, which is symbolic of traditional, traditional Christmas, Christmas cooking, cooking oh, of Callaloo. Being that, that whatever is left over, she said whatever was left over from Christmas, Christmas went into the pot, went into the pot of Callaloo. The, yes. the ham bone was the only thing left over, thing left over but everybody ate, but everybody ate everything. <laughs> so the ham bone has, you know, the rest of the meat on it, and then, of course, the flavor, the comes, flavor comes out of it. So that's the base of it. And then also we have spinach. We have three pounds of spinach, two pounds of cut okra today. We have pine that's going in it. We have pigtail that's going in it. I didn't know that was in Callaloo. Local whole year's dish. And of course, and of course we do it all year long because of high demand for it. So we do it every Saturday for our local clientele as well as the visitors to the island. And, uh, and uh, of course, we have our other spices. We have our own personal seasoning blend that we use. We use seasoned peppers, fresh garlic cloves, fresh thyme, and other spices. But those are the basic ingredients of calorie that I just told you. Yeah. And, and then we also complement it with bungee, which is made from cornmeal. Yes. Basically corn. Call that and think water. it's turn corn, literally turn corn. Turn corn. <laughs> turn corn. Okay. And they call it in the States, it's very similar. It's called polenta. Yes. So it's pretty similar. So that's the basic ingredients of Kalaloo. Yeah. And and think, of, think of Kalaloo, right? Kalaloo uh, to us is the same as, let's say if you go to New England um, and you go and Everybody wants to eat clam chowder, right? You go to New England, New England is known for clam chowder. That's our uh, comfort food, our comfort dish. Kalaloo oh, that's is, a great description. is the same to us. Thanks for that, Chef Julius. So for those of you who are not familiar with Kalaloo, the main ingredient of Kalaloo, I'm correct, is spinach, correct? Correct. Spinach, green, spinach, and okra. Spinach and uh, green okra. So we should know not only right. is it delicious, but also very healthy for you. It is, and people uh -huh. enjoy it. And there are two kinds you can do, but we're doing the traditional one today. Mm -hmm. And there's also a seafood one, which excludes mm -hmm. the pork. Ah. Because as you know, as you get older, a lot of people try not to eat as much pork. So we do both the seafood and the traditional one on Saturdays as well. I understand. Pork is a great white meat, people. Don't give it up. Don't give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Everything tastes better with a little pork in it. <laughs> Life. Right. Um, okay, and like, like Michael saying, um, Go ahead, uh, Chef. We usually just throw, yeah, we usually just throw uh, everything that's left over. So you have uh, different types of pork in the soup, uh, different types of Correct. seafood. Uh, there's some, so many people make so many different kinds. Uh, there's wilt. Sometimes you put wilts in there. 
depends right. on what you had uh, for Christmas, right? What was there? Yeah. You just throw that all in the pot. Uh, the different pot. types of proper, fish. Proper uh, Caribbean cooking. Exactly, right? We're using kingfish today, uh, but some people use snapper or whatever, mahi, whatever they had, and just throw that all in there, and that, that makes a soup. Um, also, we use spinach. Uh, traditionally, there is a kalalu green uh, right. that used to grow throughout the Caribbean, but it's a little harder to find nowadays, mm -hmm. and we kind of made that transition uh, from, from the kalalu greens to spinach and different greens as well, yeah, uh, and mix that with the okra. So this, this is what we do. Uh, so if you're at home and you're trying to keep up, now you know you have greens, you know what he's, he's talking about when he's talking about greens. <laughs> so that is the basis. So where are we gonna start? Well, we're gonna start with uh, spinach and okra, combining the two of them. Uh, of course, it's the cut okra and chopped spinach already okay. done. I already have the water on. And as I, as I stated, put, time and expediency, we already have half the preparation done, of course. But uh, we have, so the water is on and you, you wanna, when we enter, when this enters, usually we just put it all together. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically that goes in and the, the water level should be about two inches or so above where the greens are. Okay. Okay. And the reason being, of course, because you're gonna add all this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And when you add it, of course, it, it'll be too thick if you, if, you, uh, if you don't. So that's the first part of the ingredients. And right away, yeah. Chef Jackson, if you go ahead with the... Yeah, I'm just going to dice up some uh, garlic cloves here and some uh, white onion, a whole white onion. I'm just going to dice okay. those up. Nice and small. We want them to be evenly distributed throughout the soup. Okay. So I'm just going to dice those up really small. And I'm going to go ahead. This is a local seasoned pepper. Okay. That please don't use habaneros or something in it. It has to be a seasoned pepper that we use and we cut up. It's a lot of flavor in them. And we just cut it up small so right. that uh, all in flavor, your the flavor is up core. Correct. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not hot, but it's not very hot. flavorful. Right. right. And they so, look similar to the scotch bonnet pepper, so be careful. Yes. That is correct. Yeah, you'll know if you put the scotch bonnet instead. You'll know. <laughs> <laughs> That and you sure correct. didn't want to put those seeds in. So you two look like you're very comfortable cooking together. Have you been cooking together for a long time? Are you friends? Yes, we are close friends. Uh, our families uh, mix and mingle a lot, especially during the holidays. Um, I actually grew up on this soup myself. Um, you know, I'm a yeah. youngster coming up. And uh, this is the, these are the flavors that I grew up on. Um, every year we'll go to the Wassons uh, every Christmas and have this traditional kalu. So this is part of my growing up. <laughs> As well. This is wonderful. So for our, our, our 10th day of Christmas, you actually are getting to cook the kalaloo that you usually eat at Christmas at Chef Watson's house. Yes, that this is correct. This Chef Watson from now on, he can bring the kalaloo. You shouldn't have to cook it at Christmas. <laughs> I just want you to know, I'm not really a chef <laughs> by profession. Really. I, I manage the restaurant, but, but the good thing about uh, my wife and I, Judy and I, uh, is that we know everything about the business. We know how to mix every drink. We know how to cook every item on the menu. So we're never in a bind. Uh, you know, we can fill in wherever we're necessary and mix for a great combination. In other words, he's a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you know, I, I can only cook two, two things in the kitchen. I want to think I'm a chef. So <laughs> I don't care what you say. I think that you're a chef. And I see you in the kitchen and you, and you look like you're doing a great job. So the the first Go thing ahead. we're putting in, basically, uh, I just put in, just so you know, the seasoned pepper. Mm -hmm. And right now, these are these are regular cloves. As you know, no one likes to eat a clove because it's very bitter and stuff, but it adds a lot of flavor to the callaloo. So basically, we mash them so that it just blends with the flavor into the food. Oh, is that how you keep yourself from eating those cloves that just catch you in that part you shouldn't eat them in? You crush them. That is correct. Oh, we, I wish you could tell us this. <laughs> yeah, you can do that technique with some other spices as well. You just crush it, and that'll release the oils and get it, get all the flavors going. That's correct. And again, wow. you can buy the powder one, but this has a lot more flavor. Yeah, it's not yeah. it's not the same as you know when you you know you have uh, something fresh versus uh, something in a bottle. Or, uh, correct. Yeah. 
I think we have an advantage in the Caribbean of fresh ingredients and we really should try to use them. I agree. And then this, just so you know, is our house seasoning. It's a combination of salt, pepper, garlic, uh, a little oregano, different spices that we put together and I'm putting about six ounces. So, so far I've done basically three pounds of, of cut spinach, mm -hmm. and three, uh, two pounds of cut okra. So the ratio is three to two. And okay. I put the season pepper, I put the cloves in. Now I'm adding the seasoning. Okay. And this is garlic. I can go in. Garlic, onion. Okay. And now this is the ham bone that we told you about. That is traditional. The Christmas ham. Christmas <laughs> Well, who ate well, the ham? Are... Who ate the ham, Michael and Julius? That's just the ham bone. Who ate all the ham? Who ate it? <laughs> I can see it's you. You have the guilty face. Okay, <laughs> then this is the other item that we use. As, uh, it's been on many of your shows, but this is conch, what it looks like. Uh, of course, in the raw, it's already been cleaned. The sides cut off, but that's what it looks like raw. But we then pressure it for about an hour. And this is what it looks like when it's completed. Yes. Okay. Nice. okay. You can see. And I'm going to give that to Chef Jackson now so he can just. And you said back, you put that, that in the pressure, pressure cooker? You pressure cook that? That is correct. For one hour. For one hour. Okay. okay. So we have great. We have some leftovers. Someone who ate the ham also ate some kingfish. So we have some leftover kingfish from what they had there. Some cooked kingfish. Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody, was, if you're just tuning in, you're watching 12 Days of Christmas. We're cooking right now, currently, with Chef Julius and Chef Watson. <laughs> so Michael yes. and uh, Julius, and they're in the kitchen. We're making Callaloo, and we're at Petite Pump Room, which is one of the longest standing restaurants in St. Thomas, right on the waterfront. Very, very nice. Family-owned restaurant, and they are showing us how to make traditional Callaloo, which is the traditional Christmas, New Year's, ah, it's close there, New Year's, Christmas and New Year's meal that they make all year round because it is so popular. Again, by Arona Peterson, she says now for those guys, now we just need this for the coronavirus, but in her <laughs> story, she tells that it, it's a good luck for the new year if you eat Callaloo right. on all years. Yes, yes. So oh. she says that you will be married if you're dating someone and you prepare it for them, right. you will be married by, if you do it in December, you will be married by June. Listen, so, ladies. <laughs> that's, that, that's the, the folklore. Yeah, that, that and, comes and along with cows. That sounds right to me. That sounds good. So ladies and gentlemen, there are some nice men out there who would like to get married. If you've been struggling with that, now you know you missed the wrong step. You didn't eat the callaloo. <laughs> it good. was about the callaloo yeah, all along. And now you know it was always and about the Callaloo. I'm going to take that to St. Kitts, by the way. <laughs> that's going to be our new national. Going to... Go ahead. <laughs> the next item we're going to put in is, is pigtail. This is what it looks like raw. Mm -hmm. When it comes out the, with the bucket, it comes yes. in a big 35 pound pail. It's corn, uh -huh. so you have to desalt it. And uh, then, of course, we cook it for about an hour as well. Mm -hmm. until it gets tender when it's finished ah. cooking it looks like this now this has been shaved already the fat is off of it so it's just lean meat yes so, that's so what they it should looks shave like. the fat off of it so they don't get a lot of oil in the callaloo is that why you Excuse shave me? the fat why do you shave the fat so they don't get oil in the callaloo no just just for health purposes okay and uh you know nobody likes putting it's like having a steak with a lot of fat you just put it on right, the side. Shave it off. So it's the same way, you know, so so you shave all the fat off of it once it's cooked. You cook it first, we cook it first, and then we cut the fat off. And then we cut it up so it looks like this. It's, it's, in, it's in chunks like this when it goes in. So it's bite sized when you pick it up in the callaloo. Okay, oh, so nice. this is what it looks like. It's and so that would be now. the size that you cut it to put in the callaloo. That That's is correct. I'm going to hold up to show you. Right, and you notice there's so many different types of, of pork in here. Uh -huh. um, like I was saying before, uh, so like that, that size. Ah, I see. Yeah, usually 
just mix uh, so many different ingredients. There's really no one way to make kalaloo. Um, my That's dad, correct. my dad loves octopus. So uh, during the holidays, well, he likes to make a seafood mix with octopus and calamari and different things. That will end up in the kalaloo. You know, so uh, it, it all it doesn't really matter. Whatever you like, what the family eats, that usually just ends up in the kalaloo. Just that to get the correct. flavors. Okay. Going in. Nice. That's the conch and the fish. Yes. The conch and the fish. The fish that it's was left. good already. It looks really good. Yeah, this is my, like, well, you, like some people don't know, this is, you know, in St. Kitts, we have a very specific quarantine uh, when we travel, and this is my first day out of quarantine, and I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been warned I'm not allowed to eat the food before other people eat the food. I can't even get to your food. And I'm so hungry and I'm just watching it thinking, oh, wow, this looks so delicious. Uh, when we get to St. Kitts, I hope that there'll still be ackee and saltfish before <laughs> the camera comes back. <laughs> All right, next we got going here is the funji. Now the, the funji is uh, it's, uh, traditionally just a side dish. Um, here in the Virgin Islands, we eat funji with a uh, Creole fish or any, any kind of local dish we eat funji with, uh, but it's traditionally, it, it complements the kalu. Uh, if you're going to make kalu, you should make funji along with that. Uh, but we don't use it as a side dish. We usually put it into the kalu, which is like a later. dumpling. Right? Correct. Correct. Like a funji dumpling. Right. <laughs> oh, like a funji, and they, they, funji, funji dumpling. The cooking food, of course, is it's double portion water to one portion of cornmeal. So we did, we did here three cups of water. And usually I just pour, but for, for of course doing this, I, I just want everybody to see and, and get a grasp of, of if you haven't done it before, uh -huh. so that you get a feel for how you actually do it. And um, so we have the water on boiling. You know, you said earlier, you know, you can get married, but you know, some women, you know, in St. Kitts, you say, if you can't turn corn, nobody's gonna marry you. So you be careful now when you're turning that corn that you give good instruction that we would all see how to properly turn the corn. That's sure. okay. So the first Don't thing be we do, you so already this is gave us some false promise. Don't give false promise. Now you make sure you turn that corn good. We want to see. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is put a cup and a half of, of the cornmeal. And we use Amapola here in the Virgin Islands. Okay. Uh, so you're aware. And that's a Virgin Island brand. Well, it's not a Virgin Island brand, but it's a Dominican brand, maybe. It, it could possibly be. Brand. It's just uh, a well known brand here, like uh -huh. a Goya kind of thing, and everybody uses oh, yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And so then, then we just want to moisten the uh, cornmeal moisten. so that it's a little wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're almost making like a, a dough in there. That is correct. And that's, that's why you were saying it's like a, water. almost like dumpling. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you just want to moisten it. Uh, is it coarse see, or water fine is boiling. Corn. So do we use a fine cornmeal or a coarse cornmeal? Yes, yeah, fine. You want to use fine. fine. That is correct. Fine and room temperature water. Okay. Correct. Yes. And so now the key to cooking. The key to cooking fungi is you take the pot off the hot surface. This has the the three uh, the three cups of water, as I told you, and you you're, you're mixing it with a cup and a half of cornmeal. So you want to make sure that this is off the stove. If not, what will happen is it'll lump. You okay. get lumps in it. So you just take the water off, and once it's off, secret to no lumps. Secret to no lumps. And it's it's moist, so when it goes in, right, it almost just melts with the water. It blends perfectly. Correct. So that's the secret, okay. ladies. That's the secret. That's make the sure secret. Now we know. <laughs> Cornmeal. Make sure you wet the sauce. Put in the other pot of water. Make sure it's off the stove. It's nice and hot. And then you're just gonna turn it. And then, Wonderful. Chef Jules. No now, right I, I know we have to get, we're going to start getting ready to go into St. Kitts and then come back to see your finished product, but I cannot turn away before the ladies see how to finish the term corn. So everybody sees how to finish the corn. That would be, aha, uh -huh. there we go. So that's the correct texture. Like 
just like that. Yes, all you're doing is just mixing, turning, and it's gonna start to thicken on its on its own there. If you guys okay. can get a look at that right there. Okay. And then nice. we're gonna put it back on the screen for approximately 20 minutes. Correct. Okay. Cool. Now we throw it back on. Oh, you want a nice low heat? That's correct. A low heat, do you have to keep stirring it? That is correct. Yes. At first. Okay. At first. Until it gets smooth. Correct. And, and then, like I said, it's, it's cooked on a low flame because it's already hot. Correct. Okay. And, uh, and then after a while, you just put the cover on the pot and, and stir it once in a while. Correct. For about okay. 20 minutes. And then we'll show you how to test it to know that it's cooked when, uh, when, uh, when you turn back to us. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so everything is cooking. Everything is cooking. And while we're cooking, I'm actually going to introduce you guys to Chef Michael Clark, who is here in St. Kitts with me. Hold on one second. Hi, everybody, again. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, I was checking the questions because I missed some questions in there. I think we had a question before we go. I think it was something about the USVI Festival. I'm going to come back and ask you about that. Uh, Coal Pot Festival in the VI, we still have that? No? Yes? No? Okay. We're going to go on to Michael. Michael, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. So I'm here with Michael. I, I hope I'm getting a good lighting here if everybody can see us. Can you see us oh, or not? Okay, what's your camera? <laughs> <laughs> perfect. perfect. Okay. okay, so I'm actually here with Michael and we are in the kitchen. <laughs> Which is pretty exciting. Uh, I'm actually literally in the kitchen. Oh, just getting ready to begin cooking some. Let me tell, tell, tell us what we're cooking today. Okay. Chef Michael. First, actually, tell us about yourself, Chef Michael. Oh. I jumped ahead because I know Chef Michael for a long time. So tell us about yourself, Chef Michael. Okay, well, uh, I, I hear a lot of Jamaica. Yes. Um, I've been in the hotel and restaurant business all my life. Yes. All your life? Yes, yes. all my life. Yeah. Um, my inspiration came from my mother in cooking, actually. And then I, I jumped on it and did some training. I went to Tremaine Limited, which it was a, at the time was a, a well-recognized um, school for culinary arts. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I did some training, self-training. And then my last bit of training, I went to, and this is, Except working in, in, in high class hotel and restaurants, I did make a Pegasus as hotel, which was at the time was the top of the line. If you weren't going there, you weren't going, weren't anywhere, going anywhere. anywhere. So how did you end up in St. Kitts? Michael? Well, I ended up in St. Kitts because of, um, we could use a word like loyalty to loyalty to a, 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 a company or a man uh -huh. who I worked for in Jamaica for half my life, mm -hmm. and then he moved here. And so you followed. And then I, you know, I followed. That's nice. how I ended up here. But you stayed, and how long have you been I, I in St. Kitts I've, I've, I've been living in St. Kitts now for 13 and a half years. Uh -huh. um, and uh, all of that, is, I, I've been in cooking. I've been doing what I do with restaurant, you know, all of these years. And I've been doing my own restaurant for the last nine years. Mm -hmm. um, four years over the uh, peninsula. Which for us, if you don't know, is actually right on the beach. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my last five years has been here in Frigate Bay. And, well, they, they say I'm on the strip, but they don't classify me as being on the strip. <laughs> so Michael is no actually in a prime location right here in St. Kitts near the beach. Yes. So today we're going to be making for your traditional Christmas. Now in St. Kitts, we don't, okay, I'm going to ask you to tell him that I'm going to make the explanation. Go ahead. Okay. What will you be making today? Tonight I'm Christmas going to be making um, uh, my favorite um, ackee and saltfish. Now this is this is this is what the ackee looks like. For those who don't understand or know what the ackee is, it, it grows it grows on a tree, and it grows in a pot, and it's not it's no use to you like this before the pot is open like this mm -hmm. because you know anything that grows in a pot has uh, like a poisonous gas in there, and it it, it don't release until it opens like this. So hold that closer. Yeah. You can't see. So your ackee should look like this. Yes. 
Now, I know there are some people watching and they're saying, Katishans don't really eat ackee and saltfish. Well, I do eat ackee and saltfish, but I'm half Jamaican. <laughs> so I'm Katishan and Jamaican, so I grew up on ackee and saltfish. But uh, we do have a lot of ackee and St. Kitts, and a lot of Katishans are afraid to eat ackee and saltfish because they fear that it will poison them. It's just out of fear, but this is kind of... Like, I don't, I don't know anybody Aki's poison, to be honest. And if you pick the Aki properly, it's actually not harmful and it's really delicious. So I'm gonna turn it back to Chef Michael and he's gonna show you how to make this variation yes. on what is one of our very traditional dishes, which is saltfish, yes. stewed saltfish. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, picking it out the tree like this, you could even, you could even open the pod. You could, you could get, take the seed out, you could clean it, which is very simple. And then you could you could actually just eat it like that. You could just wash it and eat it like that. So it doesn't have to be cooked to to be Didn't eaten. That. Yeah, you could actually eat it just like that. So, I really like ackee. so that there we go. So <laughs> that's that's the ackee. Now the saltfish. Now people people call it um it has it has it has quite a few names. They call it bacalao, okay. they call it cod. But in the Caribbean, we don't say buffalo or we don't say um, codfish, we say saltfish. It's the same thing. So, same thing. Same thing. And the ackee, when it's cleaned and all of that, it looks like this. So, we're gonna, we're gonna combine them together now, which uh, we're gonna start with, with um, I have my stuff here that is diced onions. Wait, 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 one second before we start there. Let me introduce Michael sous chef because she's oh, yeah. standing very oh, quietly, yeah, but I see everything is nicely diced right. and I know you chefs don't really dice things. So, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, my two chef, Cheryl. She's, she's, um, Come on in a way. she's my right hand. Say hello to our viewing audience right across the Caribbean. Right yeah, she's my right hand. Okay, you go ahead now, Michael. Everybody's yeah. got to get credit. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, that's true. So we have, um, some diced onions. Um, we have, some chopped thyme, some chopped thyme, fresh. Everything grows in St. Kitts. We don't, we try to use all the local product before we go out in the, in the wider world. And we only go out there when we can't get the stuff here. That's the truth. So mm -hmm. we have chopped onions, chopped thyme, we have chopped celery, we have chopped um, scallion. Um, people here in St. Kitts, they call it pubs, but and then we have some uh, chopped, finely chopped garlic because you know garlic um it's it gives a nice flavor but it makes everything yummy. makes everything yummy mm -hmm. but but it's not nice chewing on garlic so we make we make it we chop it fine okay. and then finally so the ingredients are we have celery we have the scallion, the scallion before chopped and all of that. Just showing you, just to make sure that people who don't know. And then we have the thyme here, the sprig of thyme. And then we have the onion um, stripped and diced and so on. And then we have what you, this is what's going to put the final touch here, the Scotch bonnet pepper. Okay, as distinguished from the last pepper, remember yes. Chef Michael and Chef Julian told you do not use Scotch bonnet pepper, opposite. Yes. So for your saltfish and ackee, you need to use a Scotch bonnet pepper. It needs a little spike. And then <laughs> finally, tomato. Well, I'm giving you fresh tomato. Okay, just like I said, everything is grown here in St. Kitts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dice the tomato. Um, and it also adds color to the dish. So we dice it all up. And you got to need a sharp knife like my knife. Yes, See? It's very sharp. And when your knife can cut a tomato backwards, then you know that you have a sharp knife. See? It's all done. All done. Okay. And then my, my, uh, my pot is over here. Come over here with this yeah, pot? Yes. Yeah. And then. Actually, yeah, you come. Yeah. And then olive oil. I use olive oil. Everything I cook with olive oil. So we, we're talking about like maybe, you know, quite a cup of olive oil there. And then I'm going to add all the ingredients that I showed you earlier, which is the, the, the diced onions. Celery, top celery. And remember, this is also something that, uh, it's also good for, um, Vegetarian. For yes. people who don't eat meat, this is an excellent dish. Okay. Garlic, chopped. 
And in St. Kitts, uh, as, as uh, my email told you before, uh, it's not a custom to much, most people are custom to the actual club. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, the petition selfish first, and then we'll, we'll have the app in that first. Catching it, so I'm just oh, trying to okay. capture it. Okay, so now we have our salt in, in the in the concoction here, which was the the onions, garlic, thyme, celery, and anything you don't eat, you know, you could call it up to that. You could exclude it, you could include it. And on the other hand, we have another pot over here with my two sets of gonna um, put in the because the the, the, the size that is usually served oh. when it has to in We have green bananas in St. Kitts, they say green thing. We have yam, and then we're gonna add some dumplings to it. So my two chef several over here is gonna put in the. It's true. It's not the same without it. Yeah, not the same at all. Mm -hmm. And this 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 dish is also very versatile. You could have it for breakfast. You could have it for lunch. You can have it for dinner. You could have it for dinner. Mm -hmm. Very versatile. So we're just gonna give it a, a couple more shakes like that, and then and then finally, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and, and the way the, the traditions do their salty, they add either some tomato ketchup. Tomato ketchup or tomato paste. Yeah, but we as a chef, we know, um, you know, the tomato paste, it, it does the same thing, except that, you know, there is no, all this preservative. All the extra the, preservative from the, from and the sugar and, and, yeah. and all of that, not even here. Okay, so there it is. That looks very similar to the traditional selfish. I still think it's missing Aki. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Aki definitely will come after. If you come to my house for Christmas, you're definitely eating Aki. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's in our breakfast for sure. Let me just look at some questions here while we're watching Chef Michael. Okay, we have any, oh, I've got some new messages. Just gonna take a question. Chef Michael is adding to that. I'm just gonna take a few questions here, I see. What does uncooked ackee taste like? Chef Michael, what does uncooked ackee taste like? Okay, well, the Americans claim that ackee tastes like scrambled eggs, actually. Oh, that's actually a good description, yeah. yeah. They, they say it tastes like scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. But when you add the salt fish to it, it's out of this world. There's nothing else like ackee and salt. Nothing else, but I see somebody here, Wendy. Wendy says she got her ackee seeds from Nevis, and now they're fruit-bearing trees in your yard in Antigua. I envy you, Wendy, because there's so many ackee trees here, and they really sometimes really go to waste. So happy for you, Wendy, that you got your ackee. You're going to have amazing ackee and selfish this Christmas, I'm sure, if not next Christmas. So there we go. The selfish has been soaked and boiled, correct? Yes, yeah. where is your yeah, so I'm trying to answer your question. You're trying to work a lot of angles here. So it has been soaked and it has been boiled. Okay. Soaked overnight. overnight. Soaked overnight yeah, to, to get, get out the salt. It has a lot of salt in it. So we got to, we got to soak it overnight to get most, 
we got to get three quarters of the salt out of it, and the other quarter is left for salt, so you don't have to add salt yes. to, the, to the dish. Because you don't want your selfish too salty, but no, you also don't you want, want it stale. Too, too, no. <laughs> that's, right, that's, right. that's important. You don't want your selfish too salty, but you don't want it soaking so long that it gets stale. Okay. So while Michael is doing that, and as you see, his sous chef is is here. She's doing the side over there. I'm a little hot in the kitchen, so I'm actually going to step. Before you go. Yes. The Scotch bonnet pepper, mm -hmm. right? Can you see? Yeah. See the, the Scotch bonnet pepper. We just we just put it in the in the in the in the pot because do we do not we, cut it out. Don't cut it off <laughs> because you can you won't be able to eat it and enjoy it if you cut it off. So we just drop it in there for flavor, and when we're ready to serve it, we take it out. And what time should they put it in the pot? Just maybe ten pot. minutes. No, you can put it in the pot for you know um, 15, 20 minutes. Fifteen twenty minutes. So we it picks up all the flavors, you know. It's not funny pepper. It's very, very flavorful, but it's oh, it's not. You know, it's so delicious. Yeah, it's not an easy pepper to play with. Full of flavor, but full of heat at the same time. Okay, so this kitchen gets very hot, Michael. What do you do to cool yourself down? Well, I put the uh, I put on the extractor, but then. We no. don't and what do you drink? Heat. And I I am a vodka man. I drink vodka <laughs> with, with, with with and tonight I'm not drinking vodka tonight. I'm, I'm drinking the high discus. Wow. All of them wrong. Well, I have a hibiscus cocktail myself. Yes. So okay. I'm actually going to step up while we wait to get back to yes. USBI and to come back to Michael. We're going to come right back to Chef <laughs> Michael. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'm actually going to have a hibiscus cocktail. And actually, I think I'm going to do you one better and come to the bar with the owner of hibiscus rum and spirits. Can you see me? Do we have a little extra light, my love? This is what happens when you're live. <laughs> there we go, beautiful light. So I'm here, a little more light. Thank you. So I'm here, can you see me? Can everybody see me? Let me know if we have enough light here. Can you guys see us? Yes? Okay, so I am actually here with, with Roger Brisbane. I almost said chef because he himself is a chef. He does a lot of bringing himself. And I want you to tell me about the spirit that we'll be enjoying, which is made right here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Okay. Well, thank you, Naima. Thank you for having me and welcome the audience, wherever in the Caribbean and the world you're from. Uh, my name is Roger Brisbane. I actually own a restaurant called Spice Milk. And at that, it's a beach location. And at that location, uh, we have probably the smallest distillery on the planet. And we have taken um, Roselle hibiscus, or what most people in the Caribbean know as sorrel, and blended it with an awesome um, white rum from Antigua, Antigua Distilleries actually, with six spices, and it makes a really beautiful uh, blended um, hibiscus spiced rum. Mm -hmm. And after it's blended, we infuse the uh, sorrel flowers into it. So it makes for a really um, smooth rum, uh, very flavorful with the tartness of the Roselle hibiscus or sorrel as we know it in the Caribbean. So now so, sorrel is not just for Christmas anymore. Oh no, we actually, we have farmers growing sorrel for us year round. And um, in about four or five days, we are actually going to be launching our hibiscus immune booster juice, uh, which is packed with flavor and packed with um, potent antioxidants, high in vitamin C, A, B1, and all the, um, the nutrients you need to build your immune system. Not just that, it's, um, it should be on every Christmas table for, for lunch or dinner with your turkey. And mix it with a little bit of and your rum out or vodka or gin of your choice, and it makes. They're all hibiscus, pill. so you have hibiscus rum. All the spirits are these spirits yeah. available in the United States? Uh, we hopefully should be in the U.S. within the next two to two to three months. We're we're getting TTB registered right now. Okay, so um, for those of you who ask, right. that would be available. And while we are waiting, Roger and actually the lovely. Our, our lovely um, bartender here is going to make me a drink. I think I have one. Where did I put my drink down? <laughs> and somebody is going to make me a drink that I'm going to enjoy. But then while uh, Roger is preparing that, I'm going to go back to you over there. Are you guys ready to speak to me in USVI? I see Chef Julius is looking right at me. You're ready? All right. 
If we could shift yeah, to USB there we, go. there we go. Hi, fellas. Ready? Hi, I am. I'm ready. Can you see me? There we go. Hi. Okay, while well, I'm here, he's going to start making me a cocktail. So while you guys are pouring, Roger's going to be back here making me a cocktail. Everybody needs a great cocktail. I know you've got a great one to share with us, too, but show us what we've got. When we left here last, we had, we had the fungi on, and that's ready now. So we were just waiting to come back to actually scoop it. Now, it requires cooling for about 15 minutes before you put the callaloo on. Okay. So we have some fungi prepared that we will use to actually do the callaloo serving as well right now uh, because the callaloo is ready as well. All right, wonderful. Okay, so Let's we're gonna show you how to scoop the fungi and you would let it sit for 15 minutes. You'll see why, if not, if you put it on, right. if you put it in the callaloo right away, it'll just melt, it'll dissolve. Yeah, it needs, it needs to firm up, it's a little too soft. So once you put it on the platter, then it starts I to cool, scoop. so it's about 15. Okay. And you got these beautiful yellow fungi dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. as I was saying, so this is a, a perfect. For those of you at home that are just throwing your fungi, this is the proper plating, okay? We want your Christmas plates to be beautiful. So let's watch this beautiful plating that we're going to have here of the fungi and right. calories we did, we, we're making out of USB. This is the fungi we have ready for you, which is already firm. We did this a little mm -hmm. while ago, and it's already firm. And what are and, the red uh, things and the green things on top of the fungi? That's just a little style for Christmas. Yeah, a little sweet okay. pepper. <laughs> a little sweet pepper. A little sweet pepper for Christmas, okay. And if you notice, you put a pizza habanero on the side. This is where you put the heat. If somebody wants it, they mm -hmm. put it. Or we have excellent local hot sauces as well that some people put a little in the cap and they pour in. Uh, you could do it either way. Traditionally, it was done with the pepper on the side, but more people have moved to using hot sauce instead. Uh, either way is great. I like the heat. And uh, so that's the way we do it. And this is the actual uh, cow. Uh, one, one of our, um, our, our, our guests are asking how you know when the fungi is cooked. Oh, yes. You were going to give them that secret. Of what? How you, how, when you know the fungi is cooked. Oh, when yes. When you can feel, if, if you just, if, if you're in your kitchen, when you actually pick it up on the spoon, you can act, it, it'll be gritty if it's not, it should be just smooth. Yeah. And then you know okay. it's cooked. That's the secret to, to right. it. Right. Then of course you just Here, wash your hands. When you pretty, but, it's not gonna work out for you. Okay, remember we talked about is the correct. return cook, okay? The same thing you're talking about. Pretty pretty green. Green. Not, <laughs> As Julia said, you won't get married. You will not be, I wasn't gonna say it. I wasn't gonna repeat it. Or Julius, but since you did, it's okay. <laughs> All right, and here is our finished product. Some good traditional Virgin Island Kalaloo. And you see you have a little of everything. A little of everything. Who's going to be eating that there? Well, the ones that worked on it. Nice. Julius and myself. The big pieces of, of um, the, the big pieces of, tur of uh, pork. Yeah, that is pork. correct. You see the conch. Con I can see the, the conch. Yeah. And that's a good bowl. Um, actually, speaking about, uh, you know, traditions and things like that, uh, as me as an athlete, uh, this is one of the soups that I go to. Uh, not only that it's low in calories and it's good for you, um, it keeps my weight down. So this is one of the soups that I would eat during ah. training camp. And, training. Um, and it's just a perfect blend of nutrients, protein, and uh, super good for you. That's really great to know. I think you've been on a few shows too. I don't think you just have success in, in sport, but I'm a. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we could touch on that a little bit. Um, I've been featured on the Food Network uh, as well as the Cooking Channel. Um, I'm also an, an author. I wrote a cookbook called My Modern Caribbean Kitchen. Um, I can see that right That's here. That's why I cook the book. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and so, yes, this is not my, my first show, but I have done quite a few things and represent the Virgin Islands on different platforms. And um, I'm excited to do that. I love doing that. I love representing my home in the Caribbean and uh, inviting people to come visit us and, and you know, partake in our culture and, and learn about our culture. So, Yeah, we're glad Task found you. <laughs> and we're able to show the great chefs that we have right across the Caribbean. 
And I know we've been 10 days in, but I think that people are now seeing, they didn't even know we had all these great chefs in the Caribbean. So we know it's COVID, everybody's not going out, but you can go out, it's safe for you to go. And you should visit these restaurants, especially the Petite Pump Room over there in yes. USBI in St. Thomas, right on the waterfront, an excellent, excellent restaurant with two, well, a chef and an owner. We've got chefs and owners at the Petite Pump. But I hear that even though I see your beautiful finished meal, I believe that you too, or you put the pepper sauce, is that your own pepper sauce? Correct. We make Correct. the Petite Pump Room pepper, pepper sauce right here. You're not kidding at all. You're not kidding at all. You've got the Petite and Pump so, Room pepper sauce. And this is habaneros and, and uh, special spices, of course, and fresh garlic, thyme and stuff all blended together, heated on the stove and then it cools and then we bottle it and it, nice. it's preserved. And can people buy that at your restaurant? Yes, they can. We sold okay. up to three bottles today. <laughs> All right, okay. So if you're in the USBI or you're visiting because it is still a good time to come and visit, don't be afraid to visit. It's different times, but it doesn't mean we can't travel. Sometimes things are familiar. Sometimes we have to get used to the new normal. So if you are making right. a trip, the, a good place to go. You already know the good the food's gonna be good, so you don't have to worry about that. You know you can try the petite pump room. They've got everything you need. I hear you're also making some sweet bread. Is there sweet yes, bread? Yes, we are. We have. We have. And I think that you're ready to make a drink. A traditional <laughs> sweet bread, which is always served around Christmas time as well. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna be toasting with some guava berry rum, which is guava a local staple rum. as well. Guava okay. berry rum, and we're gonna guava berries and everything when we go outside okay well i'm gonna check in with michael and roger who's about to make me a drink and Man. then i'm gonna come back oh it's me in, in my hibiscus cup in case you missed it everybody and what am i drinking right now roger okay so this is um one of our hibiscus. if you can come to our, our camera and thank you yes okay so this is our hibiscus rum I don't know. This is our hibiscus rum punch. One second. So this is our meal. We're all looking. This is the completed the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect with paradise. The VI smiles with me. With the embers of the sea. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. To me, welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect with paradise. The VI smiles with me, with the embers of the sea. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. The VI smiles with me, with the To me. Lovely. Many things. It's picturesque harbor, duty free shopping, and exciting adventures. From wildlife encounters to beautiful vistas, this bustling cosmopolitan island is filled with wonder. Experience it all in the next 60 seconds. Kick off your visit with a stroll around Emancipation Garden and then take a sky ride up to Paradise Point for the best view of Charlotte Amalia Harbor. While you're up there, enjoy the USBI's original cocktail, the Bushwhacker. See what's blooming over at the Botanical Garden. Now on to see what's cooking in the streets. Freco, pate, johnny cakes. These authentic island eats are some of St. Thomas's best treats. Take a walk through history and discover hidden treasures of the deep blue sea. Or walk on the sand floors of one of the oldest synagogues in the world. Stroll down the breathtaking Megan's Bay Beach or dare to take on some excitement like swimming with dolphins in this dolphin sea sanctuary. Soar in the sky with a helicopter ride for a bird's eye view of this stunning island. Enjoy this hilltop view while sipping a classic cruise and rum cocktail with some locally caught seafood. It's no surprise that people call this tropical wonderland a top destination in the Caribbean. 
Although it's the smallest of the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. John is big in its natural beauty. So much so that Lawrence Rockefeller found it necessary to protect the island's lush forests, cultural artifacts, and amazing beaches. Witness it all in the next 60 seconds. Many people escape to St. John to witness the colorful scenery, explore its beauty, and relax. Their waterfront cottages and hillside villas offer pure tranquility, along with some of the best restaurants in Cruise Bay, creating a very distinct food scene. Tuck your toes in the dazzling white sand of these spectacular beaches and delve into the secret underworld to discover hidden sea creatures. Take a stroll around the world famous Mongoose Junction and explore their quaint galleries and shops offering everything from cool art, clothing, and yummy desserts. A premier place for nature lovers, St. John is the perfect haven for an outdoor adventure through these subtropic forests and steep slopes. Hit the beach for some games and live music, then onto the local bars for some nightlife fun. Now let's get going. The Love City awaits you. Although it's the smallest of the U.S. Saint 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 be Island. sure to grab a window seat. Be sure to grab a window seat. If there's one color that defines the Caribbean, it's blue. And the blue of St. Croix is simply incomparable. From pristine beaches to historic gems preserved for decades. But don't be fooled. There's plenty more to see and do on this island than just the beach. Experience it all in the next 60 seconds. Here on this U.S. Virgin Island, one of the best places to rise with the sun is at Point Udall, not too far from some of St. Croix's most unique and scenic hotels. Start your day off with an adventurous ride to witness breathtaking scenery, and then head to the famous Buck Island to enjoy this crystal blue sea. Now this is island life. But what would island life be without food? While here on St. Croix, stop by the farmer's market for some fresh produce and be sure to swing by Cast Iron Pot or Lorraine's Chicken Shack and eat your heart out. From fine dining to local Caribbean desserts, if it's one thing St. Croix has plenty of, it's certainly authentic Caribbean cuisine. Spend the rest of your afternoon getting your history fix at Fort Christianburn or watching special performances by local quadrille dancers or the Moco Jumpies. And kick off the perfect island night watching the sunset with a special craft cocktail from some of the island's best bars and lounges. So what are you waiting for? It's time to take on St. Croix and feel a vibe like no other. When flying into St. Croix, Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. we connect with paradise. The VI smiles with me, with the embers of the sea. Harbor, duty free shopping, and exciting adventures from wildlife encounters to beautiful vistas. This bustling, I think we're watching this again. If somebody could, could just stop this video, if anybody could just stop this video for us, please. We would really we appreciate it. With a around the Emancipation just... Garden and then take a sky Thank ride you. up to Paradise Hello. Point for the best yeah. view of Charlotte Amalia Harbor. While you're up there, enjoy the US. Hi. Okay, great. I didn't think we were going to get back from that. We want to thank the Ministry of Tourism for the great video on USVI. Of course, visit USVI. Uh, we're always going to encourage you to visit all of our islands here in the Caribbean and United States Virgin Islands, particularly St. Thomas. So we are back here in the kitchen 
getting ready to see Michael Clark's finished dish here at Jam Rock, which is Michael's restaurant, and enjoy our Christmas cocktail with Roger Brisbane, owner of Hibiscus Rum. So tell me what I'm drinking here, Roger, because sorrel is a big Christmas drink here in St. Kitts. We drink sorrel only really at Christmas, to be honest, and now in our rum year round. Mm -hmm. So I made a, a hibiscus spice rum punch with uh, fresh lime, fresh passion fruit juice, uh, a good shot of our hibiscus spice rum, shaken over ice and topped with uh, ting, our local grapefruit beverage. A little bit tart, but ta tangy and, um, I like it like that. and the hibiscus and the spices adds a really nice uh, flavor. So Thank you, Roger. The, I next, the next drink before you leave will be our hibiscus uh, Tequila red, we'll make you a hibiscus margarita, which is also fantastic. Woo! So that'll be at the end. So I'm gonna get another drink here today. But right now I'm gonna go over and join Chef Michael and see where he is. Thank you, Mark. See where he is in the kitchen. So where are we now, Chef Michael? Okay, well, you know, in the interest of time, I have um, Provisions are already cooked. Provisions, yes, that's what we call the side food. Yes, Some and, people call it, thank you, Raj. Yes, Some people would call it blue food. Oh, yes, and everything everything except for the flour mm -hmm. is local. Everything but the flour is local. Only because we don't make flour in St. Kitts, because if we made flour in St. Kitts, it would be local too. That's right. <laughs> and we have here, uh, we have two, um, we, we, we do the way the, the petitions do the salt fish. Mm -hmm. And we also have the Selfish and Aki. Uh, Aki internationally known and really So would it be Selfish and Aki or Aki and Selfish? Aki and Selfish. All right. <laughs> you could see more Aki than Selfish. Yes. <laughs> okay. I see the Scott Bonnet pepper still mm -hmm. not burst. If you see still not burst, yeah, Scott because, Bonnet, because yeah. so that'll be still too much. Mm -hmm. All we needed from it was just the flavor. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to start plating. They're going to start plating and yeah. I'm going to start eating. Yeah, that's nice <laughs> already have nice um, set up and stuff like that. So we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to pit the way the salt fish is being done in St. Kitts. And trust me, if, if, if you don't eat this, then you don't know what you're missing. That's right. If you don't eat salt fish, I just I don't think you're a <laughs> That is our national dish, actually, salt yes. fish. Yes. And as I said before. If you're vegetarian, this is right up your street. Right up your street. Right up your street. If you're a pescatarian, yes. it's just fish, right? Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, she's going to do the presentation over there. Okay. Oh, beautiful. And I'm going to also plate the, uh, the aki and salt fish. Wonderful. Now, once you get it in front of you, you could do whatever you want. You could throw it out the dish, whatever you want, if mm -hmm. you think it's a hassle, whatever. But that's the way we do it. Oh, look how so beautiful. And uh, we have some chopped parsley here, which we normally just do, you know, give it a little, nice little thing there. Nice. Is this your pepper? That, no, this is part of the presentation. Oh, okay. It's, it's actually... Because I know you have a hot pepper sauce. Oh, yeah, I have it. It's <laughs> actually sun-dried tomatoes and, and, and olive oil to give you that red... That beautiful color. That beautiful color. With the plating. Remember, when we say we're going home for Christmas, we want our plates to look beautiful at Christmas. It's not like everyday dinner. It's like it's Christmas. So we really want to make our plates beautiful. We oh, yeah. thank our chef. I'm sure a lot of people have made their saltfish at home, and it doesn't look like this. <laughs> so there you I'm have sure it. it doesn't taste like this either. There you have it. There you have your nicely presented um, petition way of doing salt fish and then you have the uh, international Jamaican renowned um, Aki and salt fish. And salt fish. Yes, there you have it. Something for everybody here in Chef Michael Clark's kitchen on the 10th day of Christmas days of <laughs> cooking with Christmas. I can't even get out of my mouth. I'm so hungry. All I can think right now while well, I'm here in the food, I got the food, I can smell the food. I got a little bit of that rum in me. I'm feeling like this is going to be a super Christmas. And that, and, and that, and that rum punch from the hibiscus, it goes, it goes very well with the, with both of them because, you know, fish needs a little uh, citrusy, lemony kind of thing. So the, the, the rum punch actually goes, goes well. It's, it's fresh, it's delight, it's, 
you know, so it goes, it goes, it pairs well with the with the Afghan salvage or even the social salvage. Wonderful. One of our viewers asked how long you could be the Aki is pretty much like 15 minutes. Tops. 15 minutes. Tops. Tops. Yeah, you don't want to overcook your Aki no. or it gets all mushy. Yes. Yes. You, you, wanna, you, yes, you want to get them whole. You want to get it cooked and being whole just like Yeah. That. You want it to be whole. Yes. Right? And as he said, the hibiscus rum yes. goes beautifully with that. We've got yes. the hibiscus rum. Yes. And if your rum is not your thing, hold on. Yes. We've also got the newest yes. brand. We've got the hibiscus tequila red as well. And those are both say kits liqueurs. Made here, of course, with our Christmas, I guess our Christmas fruit or drink or flower, actually, because I learned from Roger, it's a flower, sorrel, and that's what the basis of the hibiscus rum is. For those of you who don't know, hibiscus and sorrel are the same plant. So, the same plant. So, 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 saltfish, api and saltfish, it's versatile, as I said earlier. You could have it for breakfast, you could have it for lunch, and it's great for dinner. And all those people who don't eat meat, of your three. Yeah. One, of, one of the reasons why I chose to do Aki and Saltfish is because after all the things I could have done, but I chose this one because we have so much Aki on the island. Yes, wasted. And, and, and wasted, <laughs> and a lot of people are afraid of eating it. They don't know how to, eat, to, to prepare it. And that's one of the reasons why I chose to do this. So that, you know, we can um, utilize all the Aki we have on the island. Yes. And, 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 and we can also when the tourists or foreigners or neighbors or whoever they are don't come on the island, you know, it's, it's a great dish to recommend for them. It's to a have. great dish. And also, I find Aki really stretches out the saltfish. Saltfish isn't as cheap as to be. Remember, used to be saltfish was like a, an poor inexpensive people, food, people food, 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 to be honest. And now saltfish is <laughs> a bit more expensive. So <laughs> the Aki, in a practical sense, especially during COVID, stretches out the selfish that gives you a lot more that you could share for a lot more and have more people at your Christmas dinner enjoy your Christmas dinner breakfast or lunch yes. enjoying your saltfish and ackee or just your local fish and saltfish so that's wonderful thank you chef Michael <laughs> always an honor thank you <laughs> okay everybody I think we're coming around wrapping up soon if I could get back to my group over there in USI if we could see if we've got a drink there that we can enjoy Hi guys. I can't I can't hear you. You got it? Sound? Can you hear us now? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes, I can. We can hear you. Okay. So what do we have? Oh, your little glass as well. I, I want to. I want to be excited for you that you see this glass. <laughs> so tell me what we're about to be enjoying. We have here a, lo a local tradition to the Virgin Islands, which is uh, guava berry rum, which is mm -hmm. made by, made from guava berry, which is a local fruit, and it mm -hmm. bears in the summer and. It ripes like in November. So what we you can eat the fruit. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Is it sweet or <laughs> it has tart? a little seed in it? Is it what does it taste like? Uh, it's like sweet or tart? Like Islanders, we make rum out of stuff, everything. <laughs> so from way back, it's traditional that at Christmas time we start soaking the berries from the previous year. And you keep wow. adding to this Dimi John. This is called a Dimi John. And you really keep adding the berries and the fruit and different things that you use in it. And you let it marinate all year long. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the combination of the flavors is just an amazing taste. Yeah. That uh, especially the local guava berry. And mm -hmm. I know you've seen some St. Martin guava berry and stuff, but the, the local, our local guava berry marinates, you know, it, it's homegrown and homemade, so it has a lot more taste. Yeah, it's to, a little to, different. It's a little different. Yeah, a little different. Um, as well as, uh, you know, uh, this is what you usually drink after we have our holiday dinners, um, holiday lunches. Also, we also end the night with the dessert, which is sweet bread. Um, it's a regular uh, kind of uh, cakey bread. Uh, mm -hmm. 
that we call sweet bread. Uh, it's mixed with dry, uh, dry fruits, you know, raisins, uh, cherries, different dried fruits, tropical dried oh, fruits. Oh, your sweet uh, bread. Uh, That's like our fruitcake. Is that like a equivalent of like, like fruitcake? Fruit ah, I see. A very <laughs> exactly. traditional Christmas. But exactly, a little different. Exactly. And you yeah. finish the night. Yes, we finish the night with that, as well as sip on the guava berry rum. Nice. And we, uh, well, cheers and we say to cheers that. Cheers to the season. Right? Cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers to the season. Cheers. Merry Christmas cheers. here the Virgin Island. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. I think we've got dessert here too. Oh, I've got some dessert here too. See, I get I get more dessert too. You were keeping your sweet bread for me, but you know, Michael has made me a lovely baked sweet potato pudding. Oh no. Yeah. You're getting too comfortable. <laughs> it is. He's pulling it right out of the oven right now. Wow, if you see the size of the sweet potato pudding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Naima, I want to um, pull Kay into a quick conversation about um, St. Kitts. Yes. And also Natalie. Is Natalie close by? She's not present with us right now. Okay, um, maybe Roger can do it. We just wanted to talk about the destination oh, for a little that. bit. So, yeah, so um, while um, Michael is plating my dessert, I want to step out here and talk to you a little bit about St. Kitts. Are you going to talk with me, Dorit? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. So, my Kay, love. is Kay available? Kay, yes, I'm right here. Hey, Kay, uh, huh? thank you so much for coordinating the. Um, <laughs> USBI culinary team, they are fantastic. Naima, thank, thank you, you so much for all your efforts and thank for you. your team. Um, I mean, this has I been amazing. I kept, mm -hmm. I kept saying to myself, this is like a masterclass, speed learning. Um, <laughs> I mean, the travel advisors are equipped with every cultural, from every cultural standpoint with all of the information they need to yeah. really sell the Caribbean and, yes. and you know, the food, the culture, the stories, uh, it's just amazing. And of course we know that um, Christmas in the Caribbean is also special. Very and special. Um, it, it's not, you can't experience anything like it anywhere else. But Kay, tell me, Naima, I'm gonna come back to you because I know okay. St. Kitts is very special because you guys celebrate carnival during yes, the do. holiday season. <laughs> So we're gonna talk a little about that, but um, Kay, tell us about uh, Christmas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. What makes it special? Why should any? Why would anyone want to spend Christmas in the U.S. Virgin Islands? Or should I say, why wouldn't anyone well, want to spend Christmas <laughs> in the U.S. Virgin Islands? Well, you know, aside from the obvious, uh, in terms of the weather and the beaches and the fabulous people, the food the music, the, just the feel in the air, the smells, the aroma, everything just kind of comes together um, at the end of the year for, for Christmas in the USVI. Um, I think back to some of my favorite holiday memories as a kid growing up, and it's something that we can't do now, but you know, the togetherness, everybody coming together at one person's home and getting the Kalaloo the conch and butter sauce, the fungi, oh, the cheese, yes. and the Vienna cakes, and all those fun things, the tots, we were talking about guava, um, and you know, it's always a competition, which one is better, guava tart, coconut tart, pineapple tart, mm -hmm. so I would team coconut tart, but um, mm -hmm. I've gotten older, I'm more into the guava tart, so you know, coconut. all the food, you know, you get to eat like nothing else during the holiday. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's when you can just, you know, really celebrate. And then, you know, we also have carnival of sorts uh, in St. Croix. We have our- That's future. right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So each island has their own carnival, but um, alas, again, you know, we had to do all of our celebrations virtual this year. So the yeah. cruise festival is going to be virtual but you know you have your Christmas atmosphere mix with, mixed with your carnival atmosphere and just the both of those things coming together was just you know fantastic it's a fantastic time but even not being able to get together in groups you still have that same feeling um, yes for, for during the holidays and the food is what is representative of that feeling and you yes. know what you know together and help us to remember 
you know, the good holiday feeling. So I see Chef Julius over there sipping on the guava berry. I am so and, jealous. And, and, and you know, for, <laughs> yeah, cheers for to you guys. Travel, for our travel advisors, I always like to give them the history, the geography on the plate, you know, St. Kitts and the USVI. You know, you may not think that they have a whole lot in common. They're not that far away from each other. Um, but they're both a part of the Leeward Islands. And so um, yes. the Leeward Islands was, no, you know, they were known. Actually live in, in St. Thomas. Say that a again, lot of Nyla. Christians actually migrate to St. Thomas. Well, but I Christians think all of the islands, because I'm from Antigua, and, every, you know, I had four uncles who moved to St. St. Thomas. So, you know, it's... My God, um, well, St. Kitts. That's that's where the opportunity was, and of course the music all came together with jam band, and you know mm -hmm. all of the um, big bands had yeah. players from from a lot of the the other islands. Right. So you know it may look, Girl, even though they're U.S. Yeah, Virgin like, Islands, and we yeah, are man. we were British colonies, you know by by geography, by proximity, um, by migration, we have so much in common. So that's your geography lesson. But Naima, tell us about Carnival. I know like like everyone else, Carnival may not be the Carnival that we know in St. Kitts. And I can tell you, I spent a lot of Carnivals in St. Kitts when I was much younger. I actually know Roger Brisbane. I remember I remember him from back in the day. I know Roger Brisbane. <laughs> He's from still here. He's still same Roger Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah, St. Kitts is a beautiful, beautiful place, especially at Christmas. So Christmas, uh -huh. we kind of kind of made it a double barrel that people come home to enjoy the holidays with their family, um, to enjoy the Christmas season, and we go right into Carnival. So, of course, it's a little different this year because we've got COVID, so it's a bit more regulations. Most things are going to be online. But normally in St. Kitts, you'd enjoy the day after Christmas, you'd have juve. Yes. Right. And, and I know you guys were talking earlier about, you know, how to being, yes, Callaloo being your New Year's meal, but New Year's for us, on New Year's Day, we actually have Carnival Parade. So you go out at night, you, you get the next what? day, you go to the Carnival Parade for the next few. Okay. The Carnival Parade is actually oh, on the parade. Oh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And on Fort the, Street. We have concerts, we have um, shows, we have pantry, we have fair, we have traditional, folk, we have Festival of Lights this year. So we oh, have a lot of wonderful. exciting things. If you go on the website, of course, our tourism website, the Ministry of Tourism, you'd see how we've adapted. There's a bit of agitation, how we've adapted our, our carnival celebrations this year. And everybody can join in because it's online. But even if you are in St. Thomas and you're feeling a little far away from home or anywhere you are in the world as a condition or even some to enjoy the season, then you can come online and join us at St. Kitts Tourism. And you can... Uh, take part in our carnival facilities as well fantastic and they're doing and you made a good point well, too or maybe it was you naima just about having to readjust to a new normal oh look at that look at that oh, don't need wow the how beautiful i'm so jealous is that and, is that the potato pudding oh that looks it good is I haven't had that I'm in just years. Oh my goodness! Natalie, wherever you are, Natalie, this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> now it's out. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, but in talking of the new normals, you know, especially when it comes to food, and you know, food is such a big part of the vacation experience, especially in the USVI. So you know, people who come to visit us, they can still experience um, authentic USVI cuisine at Petite Pont. Um, you know, we're, we're putting things in place in terms of, you know, making reservations, making sure that restaurants um, are operating at, you know, their dining space at half the capacity and mm -hmm. um, making sure, you know, hand sanitizers are in use and social distancing. And even when it comes to Chef Julius, if you have somebody coming down, staying at a villa, you can call him in and he can come and fix you some really good food. I can vouch That's for That's amazing. Food. Oh, for sure. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy that you're doing that in, in St. Thomas Port and that we all stay. Of course, in yeah. have no COVID. <laughs> we only have COVID case three actually currently. And in total, we have 23 uh, for the whole since, since COVID. So, Jen? 
That that's pretty I amazing. Too, if you want to come home. Yep, yeah, that's pretty amazing. We don't have COVID here, so yeah, and I think that's another thing we need to start selling about the Caribbean because it's this place to be. And so for the bar in your in your houses all locked up in Canada and in the US wishing you could get somewhere, it's a good time to the Caribbean. It's safe. Absolutely. And the fairs are very, very, very enticing, I'm telling you. Yeah. Very good fairs. I'm telling Lots you. Of, yeah. so this is a great time for you to come and visit these restaurants that you're seeing and go and eat this food that these chefs are cooking live and in, in person at the restaurants because it's really safe for you. We're we're meeting all the protocols and all the islands. And we really just want to make it a safe travel experience. I know that we have our, you're selling uh, tourism across the Caribbean, but you know, I think it's important that we just let everybody know this is a safe place to come. So we are being locked up, got you feeling a little blue. It's mm -hmm. not too late for you to book your tour and fly to one of our beautiful islands. Let's do it. I say, let's do it. We have to, we have to finish the series by Friday. But after that, we can, we can pack up and, and, and meet you guys. Um, I see um, Janet Sinclair. Say that again. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. Say that again, Naima. Come stay by. Let's stay do by. it, girl. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. But Naima, you did an amazing job. I want to thank you so much for. The chefs can come too as long as. <laughs> thank you. That that would be amazing. Thank you to um, um, bring in the, the, the rum, the spice rum. I haven't had the hibiscus rum, but I know St. Kitts is known for its rums. So I can't wait for it to be available in the United States. I love sorrel. So sorrel rum has to be very special. Um, you're breaking up. Do you have any problem welcoming you here? Oh, fabulous. Oh, St. Kitts is my, well, my second home. If you don't have any it. problem welcoming me here. Oh, I love St. Kitts. I don't need an invitation. <laughs> I love that place. Love it, love it. Um, love the U.S. Virgin Islands. Spent a lot of time there as a, as a kid. I had lots of cousins, so I know it like the back of my hand. So um, this show was very special to me tonight, going to two places that are near and dear to my childhood. And, um, you know, the food, I felt like, this is food I would have in Antigua where I'm from. And, um, you know, you guys did an amazing job. I know that our travel advisors really appreciate all of the efforts that you put in. And like I said, this was like a speed learning um, masterclass where they got all this information um, and could actually experience it virtually. Um, th this was truly amazing. Uh, we, we will not allow COVID to set us back, we're going to continue to bring all the information, bring all the knowledge. We want when the when travel reopens fully, that everyone can go come back to the drawing board with new ideas, new experiences. We want you to you can't be selling the same old things you sold prior to COVID. You know it's going to be very competitive. Every destination is going to be um, coming hard, coming um, tough. And so we want to get our travel advisors up and run, running and, and, you know, supercharged with information that they can um, get, help us reactivate our economies almost immediately. So we need all hands on deck. And so what everyone brought to the table here tonight was truly, truly appreciated and will go a long way in getting our travel advi advisors equipped with the knowledge that they need to sell, sell, sell the Caribbean. So to everyone, sell, thank you sell, so sell. much. From the bottom of thank our you. hearts, we really the appreciate your all. efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Have a very yeah. Merry yeah. Christmas. We love Just you work. all. We can't wait to come see, yeah. you, ver see you in person. Yeah. This virtual thing is getting lame. <laughs> it's what we have to do, but you know, um, let's get back to business. Let's get back to traveling. We can't wait. There's so much to discover. I've learned so much. I thought I knew the islands. So, um, oh, again, we love you from the from bottom of our chefs, hearts, and we'll see you. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We have two more chefs tomorrow. I was just we're, chefs a lot. Yep, tomorrow we're going to the Turks and Caicos ahead, Islands, Michael. and yeah. we have two female chefs. <laughs> Uh, Beth Charles will be our this. host. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me hear what um, Julian is saying.
look at this as the beginning of something very, very special. So next year will be even bigger and better. Next oh. year we're doing it in person. This this Zoom thing won't last next year. We're not doing the Zoom thing. Next year we're actually coming. That's why I say bigger and better. Oh yeah, yeah. we're we're gonna we're gonna pick our spots and, and we're gonna have a meetup. You know, so we're coming to St. Kitts. We're gonna come to the USVI. Um, those who can't make it can join virtually, but the aim is to make that human connection and to start traveling again. Right. So we're going a little north tomorrow. Um, we're going to the Turks and Caicos Islands. You can join us by boat. You can join us by plane. You can join us by dolphin, by donkey. However you get to the Turks and Caicos Islands tomorrow, that's where we'll be with two female chefs. And it's going to be an all-female um, presentation tomorrow because we will have a female host as well. So for those of you who need to know more about the Turks and Caicos Islands, meet us tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So everyone, have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. We love you all, and we can't wait Thank to you, get Chef. together with you in person. Bye. Thanks Thank so you. much. and. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye, everyone. <laughs>